Bueno, bueno, bueno. Okay. So, this is a talk about games and um, using geodata about games. And this all came around because we were drinking way too much around Easter and um, eating Mexican food. So, Rich is going to start with the first part about the game we built because we were drinking a lot of scotch and eating Mexican food and um, talk a little bit more about geo games. So, in America, we have an issue with God. <laughs> Fewer than 40% of Americans are willing to say they believe in evolution. And yet, in our street names, Darwin beats God by. It's a beatdown. Loki, only nine streets in America have Loki in the name. But which God do we want? Apollo, 548 streets. Even the Viking gods, Thor, Odin, Freya, Loki, we have streets named after all of these gods. Planets, Neptune wins. The haters on Pluto, Pluto still beats Uranus. Obama versus the Easter Bunny, not even a contest. There are no streets in America named for the Easter Bunny. You have Dumb Bunny Point, but our street, but no Easter Bunny. So this is all from a site we made, Street Name Fight. And you can actually go to streetnamefight.com, inner words, uh, and it will tell you the occurrence of streets in the US with those words in them. There are all kinds of sophisticated things we could do to improve it, but how can you improve on that basic, basic model? You can also look up a zip code and see the streets that are in a particular zip code. So recently a friend said they were in this neighborhood of like Candy Apple Lane and Pecan Pie Road and whatever, and I typed those in and I realized, ah, I know exactly where you are. There is only one zip code in America that has those four streets. Other streets, rock, paper, scissors, rock. Miles versus feet in other abstruse measurements. Yeah, miles, kilometers, one street in America has the word kilometer in it. Size of the entire universe, man. Triangle, 374. Universe, 19. I don't think so, universe, man. So what do we remember in our things? Approximately, this is one of our, our short uh, our issues with the site. I can only do single words. Uh, so looking for Jefferson Davis, I have to look at it slightly different. But there's about 145 Jefferson uh, Davis streets, Jefferson Davis Memorial, Jefferson Davis whatever. This is the president of the Confederacy. 8,581 Lincoln, second only to Washington in our president streets. 1,300 or more Martin Luther Kings. So the things that we this sort of toponymic exploration of our street names is at once silly, but also kind of useful. In Albany, in the East Bay here, we have these the series of president streets, and then intermixed in there are these, well, these Hispanic named streets. So you, you feel like there's this tension in the urban planning office. Um, right near here, we have a series of what look like state named streets. I think it may have been chiffy. Someone was telling me yesterday, it turns out those are actually named for battleships. <laughs> so it's why the streets are incomplete. Right? The Bible in America, Salem's, Jordan's, Zion's, Bethel's, Eden's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A thesis? I mean, I don't even know what these things are. Galatia? Dance, love, rain, paradise. Paradise beats love, but we have an appreciable amount of love, even rain and dancing. Doric, Ionic, Corinthian, Corinthian. Sand Puppy Road. Wouldn't the world be better if the VCs lived on Sand Puppy Road? Our, our Republican presidents, I don't know, I don't have the other ones, but um, yeah, it stands for itself. There are actually three Obama streets, and they are Barack Obama avenues. We have more love, more dreams, more wisdom in, than we have money or truth in America. And not really very much understanding. But we're, we're kicking butt on peace and love. 
And in America, Scotland is bigger than Jesus. <laughs> and the Beatles just don't even rate. Alphabets, as you'd expect, never eat smelly worms in that order. And then C Street, more C Streets than A Streets, confuses me. And in the past, we have a, a log in here. These are some of the past ones. Um, obviously, the second one was my son. Um, <laughs> he was talking to me in the log files at one point. Uh, the penultimate one is probably a friend of my son's. There's a, a certain amount of creative spelling in his life. And God hates programmers. Washington, we have lots of Washington in our states. Um, I notice this doesn't seem to have any two-word streets or states, South Dakota, North Dakota, South Carolina, but maybe that's intentional. And um, that's it. So now Sophia can do something more. Um, yeah, something more. I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Anybody want to help me and tell me what the full screen is for uh, Firefox? I typed it. View. <clears throat> F11. Okay. Your function keys map that way? No. <laughs> and do you have Chrome on this? No. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna go. We're gonna munch on with this. Okay. So, uh, titled after a British game, also a rather popular uh, song. Um, it's talking about geo games. So that's us. <laughs> Jesus, this thing is. See, so you, you start getting all fancy and doing stuff in HTML and thinking you're gonna be really smart. Dude, your browser sucks. Okay, I'm not able to advance this, so I guess. Sorry about that. Okay, better, sort of. Okay, so there's us, and why this is not advancing is beyond me. No, because I'm beach balling. No, lovely. Okay. So I'm going to talk about several different games. I mean, we've seen a lot of geo games that are happening. So Geo Guesser, everybody play that yet? Okay, Geo Guesser, awesome. You get dropped in the middle of nowhere. You got to figure out where the hell you are scores the points by how close you get to it. Um, click that hood, which is, is Mr. Marchin over here. Marchin Witchery, he um, led the development of that. I don't know if Shonix here, but it's a pretty awesome game. Um, you basically, it's a memory game. So we'll talk a bit of that. Of course, Rich has talked about Street Name Fight, and then we'll talk about Court a little bit. So GeoGuessr, you get dropped in the middle of nowhere. You use clues to do it. I'm not going to demo this, I originally intended to. But basically, you get stuff like this. You're in the middle of nowhere and you have to figure out where in the world you are. It's pretty awesome. You can waste hours doing that. Um, one of the neat things you can do, well, I'm gonna go more into that. So click that hood, and this is just a quick overview. You're able to, you, you have to um, figure out, it tells you which, uh, you know, which neighborhood you're in. You have to go click the little thing, and it tells you, you know, whether it scores you by time and how fast you do that. So other ones, Street Name Fight, which just talked about that, and Court is a game that allows you that gives you missions to um, improve OpenStreetMap. It's relatively recently re-released. Okay, so what makes them engaging? Court, we'll begin with that. Just basically, it's the mission type game, check in, assign tasks, and rewards you with some sort of bragging rights by having coins and stuff. Um, GeoGuessr is just 
basically you're hunting for clues, right? Very fun game in that in that sense. And flick that hood is just silly information that you can make inferences about whether it's like you well, there are more Jefferson Davis streets in the south. Is that would that be true? Or versus Lincoln streets in the north. Um, and again, street name fight that and click that hood is a memory game. So court we'll talk about first quickly. Um, if it's a handheld mobile game HTML5 site. Um, basically, the mission gives players a sense of purpose, which I misspelled. Um, so purpose in the sense that they go and fix um, and find, you know, fix pieces of open street map for points um, or what they call coins. Um, coins and badges, basically, they're bragging rights. You really can't do anything with it. Um, as it, with, with lots of check, check and apps, you got to really ask what differentiates it from it. And for me, it's like, well, I've, it's this is like any other check-in app kind of thing where you have Ingress, um, which is the Google game where you go around in missions and you find whatever alien stuff. But, you know, it's there, it's kind of interesting, but it's sort of a tired paradigm for games. So GeoGuessr is a great game because, I like it because it engages you. So the gameplay just is just about using your clues to determine where you are in the world. And there's no set rules, okay? People say, well, you can't Google for this, and you can't Google that. But I mean, you're looking for clues. You know, If you're an urban type of person, you're looking at the cars, what side of the road they're driving on, you know, what any street signs that you can find, that kind of stuff. Um, another person I talked to, they're more of a um, you know, plant person. So they start looking at vegetation around that, whether it's deciduous, coniferous. Um, they start looking at the uh, actual soil around that to help them determine where they are. Um, so the nice thing about it is that there is no leaderboard. We're not competing against others, but you can challenge your friends by sending them a link to what you've done recently and see how long it takes and how many points that you, um, you're able to collect. So the neat thing is this asynchronous gameplay. Two people don't have to play at the same time if you're playing against each other. You know, you can pick it up, drop it, which is you know things like Words with Friends, a similar type of uh, gameplay. Um, Click that hood is essentially a memory game. It's you know, it, it basically when you're a kid, you, you throw down all those cards on the, on the ground, face down, flip it up, see which ones match, right? You're just matching cards. So it's the same idea. Um, one of the cool things about it is, you know, background is from Mapbox, OpenStreetMap stuff, um, and also the, the, the imagery as well. But users submit the data for the, different, um, for the different neighborhoods that you click on, and it walks them out, it, you know, takes people who want to put their neighborhood on the game, takes them from shapefile all the way to GeoJSON, and being able to push that back in. So it's an open repository. It's a game that people can actually add to, um, which is a very neat feature. It's a different feature from most other games. So uh, one of the things that Marchin said that, you know, one of the criticisms is that's just Zillow data. But when he looks at it, he says about only 20% of the data is from Zillow, um, which is, you know, fairly not a great data set, but it's there. Um, but, you know, it gets replaced when better data is found. So um, there we go. Street name fight again. We're just you know, Rich went over this stuff, which is just grab you know a bunch of street names and comparisons and just make some sort of you know generalizations about it. It's an interesting way to explore that information. We go down to the zip code level. You can look at the different zip codes and the roads in that zip code. So um, really great if you have conspiracy theories about America, um, and it just feeds sort of these pop psychology analyses. So what makes a good game? I mean, for me, it just has to engage the user, uh, makes them think, um, and be resourceful on how they're playing through this game. Um, but one of the things is the gameplay should be simple but challenging. You know, challenge their brains, challenge people, um, how do you think around this problem? Um, so people say when you gamify stuff, you know, you have leaderboards and a way for people to compete against each other, and that's not necessarily true. Um, you know, you don't need to be able to have top score in a game kind of thing for people to be you know, engaged in using it. And also, um, let the game be a hook for further exploration. It's not a way to actually, you know, Zynga's just around the corner over there. So, I mean, they're trying to monetize you by doing stupid stuff. Um, but one of these things about the geo games is that, you know, you're able to explore something more about the world. You learn more about street names. You learn about places you are. You're, you're looking at you know, clues. So there's lots of interesting stuff going on there. So um, that's basically it. And like we said, it's a keep effing with it production. Um, 
and so uh, yeah, that was basically a scotch infused, uh, uh, you know, rant on games that we've been playing. And that's it. So questions, anyone? No. Any games you'd like? To, kind of games you'd like to see built? Okay. Well, yeah, actually, that was the point. That's where we were like sitting around talking about that. And it's like, well, can we quantify how many streets are actually named Washington versus Jefferson Davis or, you know, versus Jefferson? So, and we give you tools to start exploring that and where they're located just by giving you the, um, uh, you know, just the zip code. So it'd be easy to find where they are in the world, where, they, where these instances are located. But the, the question of why? Really good one, and as we were saying, this, this level is pretty flat. Um, at certain levels, it's Yeah, we, we have no concrete reason of why culture chooses this one. We can only infer from location. And, you know, we can build out and make maps based on these kinds of things. Um, we've chosen not to because we're fundamentally lazy and we're hoping that other people will take up the torch and, and build some interesting stuff. And, My son qualifies to be a, uh, a son of the Confederacy, actually. Well, my great-great-great-grandfather took a mini ball now. He's directed his life, so. <laughs> That's, anyway, yeah. So th there was a question back there? Yeah. It was court. It was um, somebody's, I think, believe they're either uh, master's thesis, um, and they built that game, and then they actually have just republished it out um, as a game to play it. So it's a for, actually a fairly nice app. It's HTML5, works on all your mobile stuff. Chippy? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think part of the thing is that well, the data, there's lots of interesting data there. and But the, the way people name things is just, it's also a, a synoptic view. People just name things, there's a fashion to name something the dragon blah or the king's blah. And that might have happened in the 60s or 70s at some point. So there's a dimension there that we're missing that where we can actually look at it. But then we can just look at the um, you know geographic and regional variation.
yeah, we were trying to find. Well, that's part of a discussion. It's like, why do you know suburbs get named things like you know mountain lake meadow when there is obviously no mountain lake or meadows in that area? Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it, there seems to be a fashion for a while that, you know, places were named Deer Run. Mainly, maybe they were running off the wildlife um, <laughs> or just by destroying the habitat by putting a suburb in there. So, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, there is, I get, my feeling is, and from my contact with planners, is that, you know, they basically name these things for some reason to go along with the theme of that. Well, a lot of these things, you know, they're just, they talk down with such a good thing. Uh, the developers name on a relatable anecdote to track the flag. Okay. Well, no, that's actually a really good point. There's um off of I come from Texas, and so off of Highway 71, which is between Austin and Houston, there's a place called Tahitian Village, and they actually have Tahitian names in the middle of basically, you know, Texas. Absolutely ridiculous, but you know, it's like, oh, I guess everybody knows where you live when you, you know, when you when you say the name of this particular street. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, if there are any hints on that monetization, you know, go ahead and let it down practical. Yeah. Um, any last questions? Questions? Chippy.
I think if you do not improve the world, you are improving the world. Well, you know, I mean, you, well, you could, I mean, it's like that differentiation between people who just use OpenStreetMap versus people who actually, you know, work on it and improve it in part of the community. It's like, what are you going to do? I mean, people are going to use it. I mean, tons of people, Foursquare is looking at OpenStreetMap. You know, use Foursquare, you're using OpenStreetMap. You can, so actually, that's a, that's a really good question that I hadn't even considered. Because in my, uh, it, you know, in my, my privilege as a programmer, I hadn't even considered that I could give that anything to anyone. But it's kind of right. It should at least say, you should go improve this data. That would be good. I... <laughs> okay. I guess we're done here. Thanks, all. Thank you for coming. <laughs>